Hello, this is a review of the TP-Link 5-port gigabit desktop switch. This is the model TLSG1005D. Now, what you get out of the box is what you see in front of you here. Basically, of course, you get the switch itself, AC adapter, and two manuals. So basically, you get your English manual and your Spanish manual. But honestly, you don't need either manual. It's just a simple listing of features. Otherwise, it's a set it and forget it because it's an unmanaged switch. Bottom line is, on the back, you have ports. You can plug anything you want into these that needs your network connection up to a gigabit speed, which means it is backward compatible to your 10 megabit and uh, 100 megabit um, connections from the past, as well as gigabit and it will detect and enable whichever ports you happen to have it connected to and switch between them. And a switch is better than a simple hub of the ancient days uh, because it's much smarter about how it broadcasts traffic between the ports to, to not hog the network. Um, but, so it's a switch, it works, any of the ports will work so you don't have to worry about what you're doing when you're plugging them in and it um, uses less power. In my experience it has used one third power than my other router so we're going to take a comparison between those as well. So let's take a closer look at it. So this is the unit here. It's quite light in weight so if I put it on a scale, kitchen scale, you see it weighs uh, almost seven ounces a little less than six ounces and it's actually lighter than my other D-Link router which only weighs ever so slightly more um, that weighed almost closer to seven ounces. Where they make a really big difference between the two is the AC adapter. I mean this is a so much nicer than the old style bigger bricks that we had in the past because this little guy aside from being smaller weighs only two ounces whereas I have to have plenty of room to connect this and this one weighs almost 14 ounces. That's 14 ounces compared to two. So the weight for hanging on the wall and find a spot is a terrific difference. So it's nice that most things go smaller. Um, as we look at it more closely, obviously the front, um, other than just having the label and the model number, has your power and then whichever ports are actually active based on what things are currently um, it's switching between. So that's pretty standard. That's been on routers or other switches for um, a while as well. Flip it around, um, basically you just get some minor air vents here or there, and then it's just the five ports on the back. Even though one of the ports looks offset, you don't have to treat it any differently. On the bottom you have rubber feet so that you can set it on a flat surface and it doesn't slip and slide all over the place. And then you also have hanging hooks, so if you have a screw or something on the wall that you want to um, hang this onto the wall, and it hangs a few different directions. So what you can do with the, the two that you have here, you could hang it like this so it hangs on the wall just like that or you can hang it like this or you can flip it over and hang it like this. Now upgrading from my old router the bottom line is it's gigabit versus slower this one is lighter although technically a little bit bigger um, this one has a much smaller power brick this one had a much bigger power brick and the biggest thing is this one uses one-third the power, this uses three times as much power. So this definitely does some advantage. But, but both of them, for a while, are also smart about whether, how many things you have plugged into them. So if you only have two devices active, even though you have all things plugged in, if they're not powered on, it's smart enough to know that you're not currently using that port and even powers down further. Well, my other one did that too, but the whole scale of the thing is one third less. And I'm going to prove that to you with a kilowatt meter in a moment. So let's test the green aspect of this. So here, first my existing switch that I have, that's an older D-Link switch, my DVR, my Xbox, both running, connecting to my existing DSL line to the house and I'm using half the ports on my existing one and so up to that I have my kilowatt meter um, connected. So we can take a closer look here and see that my old D-Link router is taking 4.1 watts for this setup running at 0 0.04 amps and if we cycle through we'll see that it works out to be about 98 cents a month so about a buck a month on my current rates and my utility rates are um, at the upper tier, about 34 cents a kilowatt hour. And let's see how much the power fluctuates on the old one when I turn off one of the devices. So I just turned off the Xbox by reaching through and let's see that um, we can see that it has dropped down to 3.9 watts of energy. So it's even on my old 10, 15 year old D-Link router, it did drop a little to be smarter about which ports are in use. And now we'll compare that with the new greener router. 
Now I've switched everything to the new TP-Link switch off from my old D-Link switch. Turned on the Xbox again, I still have my DVR on, so it's the same original setup I have here. And let's go look at what it's translating to. So right away we see this is definitely using less power uh, than the old D-Link switch that I had. So with the exact same original setup, I'm only using 1.4 watts and 0.02 amps. And if I cycle through to see cost, the same monthly cost is now down to a quarter, you know, 24 cents. And so it definitely uses significantly less um, than the other one. I mean, we're still talking about small amounts, but it adds up over time. So here I'm turning off the Xbox like I did before. And let's go ahead and see what that translates to. It only makes a very slight small difference. Um, so it goes down to about 1.1 watts and hovers between those two. Uh, but the amps made a noticeable difference. It went down to 0.01 amps. So it does make a difference depending on how many things are actively being used. So simply by powering down a device, it makes a difference. So I turned off the Xbox and it uses even less power. Well, my old Switch did that as well, but this one does it, it still. But overall, everything is already using less power and it still makes a smart use of which ports are actually active. It powers on fairly fast too, so watch. Power on. Let's check the status on the port. Got power, got a connection. The bottom line is, it's a switch, it works, it uses less power, and it's an easy swap for me to just simply swap out my old D-Link router and use something that uses one third the power and supports gigabit. I have no complaints. So there you have it. I've completely switched out my D-Link switch and I'm now using the TP-Link switch. Thanks for watching the review.